Hey everyone, hope you are doing awesome. Welcome back to my channel Pega Hut with another video. Thanks everyone for subscribing to my channel and if you haven't hit the bell icon yet, please do so you won't miss any of my videos. Please hit the like button and leave me a comment or feedback if you like the video or the way I have explained. Welcome to REST API series part 3.2. What we have covered so far, we have finalized the API basic in part 1 and 2. We also have finished how Pega connects with Get API using Connect REST in part 3.1. And today we are going to discuss about how Pega integrates with POST API, which expects a request body to be passed and will also explain on how it is different from consuming a Get API. I would strongly recommend to watch my part 1, 2 and 3.1 video before you start this one so you can get all the details that you need. So without doing any further delay, let's get into it. So as you guys know, that here I'm gonna show you quickly that this is the postman where this is my uh, uh, post uh, which, uh, which is the topic for today and then I'm going to um, consume this one or I'm going to create a REST service uh, for this particular uh, URL, uh, URI and uh, uh, this is gonna be my request and this is how my response would look like right now let's let's go back to pega and try to do so as you guys already know so i'm gonna uh, uh, speed it up uh, this one a bit because as you already know and i've explained in my last video uh, so you go integration connector uh, create rest integration uh, people who haven't watched my uh, other video get uh, get one please uh, if you want all the description please go through with the description i have explained everything over there now the system here i'm again uh, so because we have got already uh, employee so here what i'm going to say uh, i'll say emp just to uh, create a different uh, integration class for the time being and i'll go ahead and create as you know that um, i mean the moment i put endpoint url you will find uh, all this parameter but here i do not have any parameter so don't choose anything uh, most likely uh, in post uh, uh, when you create uh, you may have parameter where you are again uh, going to update something there also we use post where you are passing that employee id let's say if you want to update some uh, some employee id detail existing employee id detail then uh, your uh, parameter uh, your uh, id might be like that your uri might be like this wherein you are going to pass the existing id to update but here we are purely creating a new uh, employee so that's why there is no parameter don't choose anything and leave as is because we are not uh, having any header we are not having any authentication and we do not have any query parameter now if i go uh, click on next right so what will happen here by default the get will be uh, uh, checked in right just get rid of get now here we are doing post now if you see if i click on override so you will see query string parameter as i don't need it header also i don't need it so that's the first thing you need to do and here you need to do create employee okay now if i click on next uh, then it asks for uh, sample uh, request and response so the moment uh, i'll say add re response right here if you realize uh, if it is get get doesn't have a uh, body right but post has now if you realize the moment i because i have chosen post i have i can see a request uh, populating here right now what I'll do is I'll uh, use the same request that I was passing from Postman and then I'll click on submit. The moment I click on submit, so I would, uh, uh, so uh, one second, uh, sample list, the service is not invoked yet, access is so choosing done and click again. Okay, so basically what is trying to say, so you get this error uh, the moment I click on submit what is trying to say because i haven't run that rest service it hasn't even consumed the response right and i'm trying to do submit that's the reason why uh, we we can see this error so what we need to do is first we need to click on run, run and then we need to get the response so now my response has come to code is 200 and my response has come as you see over here it's the same response now i'll do submit so what will happen is in this uh, uh, way pega will capture all the request and response which you can see now here in the view now we have captured the request and response now let's proceed to the uh, uh, next step now as you guys know the next step would be most likely creating an integration layer and a data layer now one thing i want to uh, call out here you might hear uh, um, you know your team or lead or uh, uh, somebody saying uh, like if, it, if you are doing for the first time or if you are a junior developer they might tell you uh, to uh, skip the data layer. You do not need to create a data layer. They might tell you. The reason behind is, 
as you guys already know i don't need to explain that integration layer is uh, going to have this connector name and you will have request data transform right now uh, what integration layer will do is you form a request and then you call the connector right now uh, why you need the data layer so that you can capture that data as part of your deep page right and then eventually you can use that in the later point but here if you uh, uh, um, realize that here we are forming a body but in get we didn't have a body so that's the reason we you, we uh, it was easy for us to call by uh, get employee id because we just pass one or two parameter and then eventually it will map that parameter and form the body but in the post you'll have a lot of uh, details than just couple of parameter right you'll have a set of uh, body in in my case it is just three but in in real time you can have more than three you can have 10 20 right you can't have those as parameter of a db page so how do you do that you uh, use activity while calling a post that's the whole reason why i have different uh, shared this uh, two post of how to call get and how to call post because the the way you call is different now uh, can you use a db page yes you can uh, use a db page but it's going to add a lot of complexity uh, to your uh, flow which you don't want to do it so if um, uh, you don't want to create a data layer in this section you can feel free to skip so uh, what i'm going to do is i all i need is i'm going to create an employee and i'm going to uh, uh, get the id and i'm going to store it uh, uh, in my uh, response i don't need a uh, created data layer so here what i'll do is i'll skip uh, uh, doing a data layer and i'll show you how it works okay but feel free to go ahead and create if you required to but ideally you don't need to okay now here everything uh, looks good i will change the uh, app context here uh now here if i'll uh, means rule set here what i'll do is i'll say existing and because it is an integration so i'll just quickly go ahead and choose the int there right now i'll do submit quickly do a preview uh record everything is good and then i'll go ahead and create okay now uh once it is so you will have this generation summary where you the records will get created and once everything get created now what we can do is we'll quickly verify so i'll just close this one and what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly verify um, here now let's go back to the uh, record which we have created so i have kept it in xy organization layer right so i'll just go to organization layer here i'll expand int and here you see the e emp we have created where i have got uh, uh, all the classes uh, required classes and if i go to the api classes you will find that uh, in the data model i have a property where i have got request in the request i have got a body post where i have got age name and salary in the response i have got all the details that is required right now uh, this is the reason why i don't needed a data layer here because i am going to call in a different way i am going to show you how okay uh, now be before even i am going to show you how what i have done to again uh, you know only the focus on the context not the uh, other uh, aspect so i have again uh, taken the same dummy class okay where i have got this uh, field and here what i have done is i have created a section i'll show you how i have done is and here i put name salary and age so that i can take all the detail okay and then uh, uh, get an uh, uh, or uh, take all the detail and then uh, get uh, create an employee in the back end as in in the by calling an api and get the employee id show on the screen okay now to do that what i did like our, our general practice uh, that we follow so uh, if i expand dummy classes so i have created a uh, property uh, data model property i created a property called emp de detail and in that property if you see the class that i have uh, referred is data employee details now if you, if i go to that particular class all the property is there in that particular class data model if i go Uh, so I, I basically uh, created this three property which we will be passing to API, and also I have created a section over here, and I have I have done an embedded section in the uh, uh, dummy section. Okay, so here in the dummy section, if I go to user interface section, collect info. Here in the collect info, what I did is I have created an embedded section where my uh, page source context is employee detail, where I am passing that employee detail, and I am using that section, and I have hidden this employee ID uh, field. and it will only be only be shown once uh, i have uh, got the detail okay so i have that this is clear this is what i have done now what i am going to do is uh, once i give uh, name salary age just for the timing what i am going to do is i am going to uh, put a button here 
so that that button the on click or submit button uh, i will uh, uh, you know call an activity to do that now to do that what i'm going to do is first this button i'll say uh, create an employee uh, create employee okay uh, and then uh, here in action what i'll do is i'll say on create what uh, refresh this section right and in the refresh this section i'll call an activity so uh, when i call that activity let's say i'll say create employee activity okay now i'll go here i'll create this new activity in the same dummy classes so this is how we generally call a post because we have to form the request body okay and to form the request body you need an activity okay now here i'll just quickly save it and then here i'll come and save submit and save it okay now this this section is all done now here i would show how we are going to um, uh, you know form that request body how we going to call uh, the connector and how we going to capture the response body back to our work page right now this is in my work page okay now the first thing is what i need to do is i need to create a temporary use uh, user page now to create a temporary use page so what i'll do is uh, temp create employee create employee and the temporary use uh, uh, user page should be uh, you know should be belongs to the class which i have created in the int there so if i go to int right now why uh, okay, i'll tell you why but let me first go ahead and uh, put that class now hyphen int hyphen emp and hyphen create employee so this is this should be my temporary uh, page class hyphen int hyphen emp hyphen create employee right? this should be my uh, temporary user class so that i can able to access all the property and form a request body that's the whole idea okay now the first thing is obviously uh, page uh, new okay here what i'm doing is i'm basically creating this temporary uh, page sorry control c temporary page okay first thing is done now second thing what i need, so page new is created now do i have an header no i do not have an header so uh, first thing is i'm saying create a new page new page of int class okay now what i'm saying is uh, doing a request mapping doing a request mapping for api now to do a request mapping what i need to do is i'll click i'll use the temporary page and i'll do a property set property set here basically i'm going to p r o p r t y property set here basically what i'm going to do is i'm going to map this name salary and age which is in my work layer right if i if i have created this property in my work layer okay so let me do one thing let me pin this class so that you would uh, understand what i'm doing here uh body post this is going to be my this one now here if i go to dummy and uh, data model property so employee detail dot age name salary is in my work class where i'm collecting the info now i need to map from this property to my uh, int property so to do that here what i did is i put my step page so the moment i click on dot what you can find all the because this step page belongs to this uh, class so you will find find all the property that belongs to this class so here where i need to set i need to set on request it's a page and then body underscore post it's a page and then i need to set in the individual property so uh, what i need to do is i'll say request dot body underscore post dot uh, age okay now this body underscore post age means i am forming this temporary uh, object where i am uh, forming the object uh, uh, individual field now where this age would come from this age would come from here right now to do that what i need to do is i need to choose primary because the context has already changed right so i need to do primary the moment i click on dot i will able to access uh, to all the property here employee detail age right similarly please uh, go ahead and add uh, name and salary so i have added uh, all the other property name and salary now my request body is all good right my request body is formed now once my request body form so if you if you remember what is the flow that i have explained how this connect rest work first you form the request body second you call the connect rest third you uh, capture the response body these are the major three step so now what we are doing is we are going to call the connect rest api connect rest to connect the api so here to call the connect rest there is a method called connect rest okay uh, in here uh, activity there is a method called connect rest 
where you can call the connect rest. Now if you see, if I call the connect rest, if I try to find the service name, would you able to find? No, right? Because your PY work step page again is in the, uh, I mean, if I don't mention any step page, what is my step page default is my work layer uh, step page. Here I don't have connect rest. Where I have connect rest is here, right? If I go to integration connector, that's where I could able to find the connect rest, uh, right? So that's the reason why you need to make sure you add the step page wherever necessary. Now here I need to add the step page. The moment I meet, I add the step page, I'll just quickly save it so that it will come. The moment I add the step page, what I can do is I'll get the create employee because now my context has changed and I'm going to get my connect rest here. Now uh, for endpoint URL, you can uh, pass it from here. It feels free to uh, this one. But if your connect rest has already got this endpoint URL, then obviously it will take from there only. You don't need to pass it. So I'll leave the endpoint URL as is. And here I just need to change it to post because I know it's not a get method, right? Yeah, and execution mode, you can choose run, run in parallel queue. For the timing, I'll go ahead and run because I want a synchronous execution. Now my connect rest is done. So what I have done is I have uh, created a connect rest where my uh, uh, I, I have called the API. Now at this point, it will call the API, get the response. So the moment it call the connect rest, it will go to this method, it will create this post method, uh, call this post method where it will pass the necessary request, whatever is uh, required. And also it will, it will go and uh, um, uh, get the response and store in my uh, response post. So uh, yeah, so by the time it reaches here, it will have the response. So request body has been mapped and uh, similarly the response uh, body has been mapped. So by the time this connector connect this step will be executed if the api is successful that that means it will go and uh, create an employee get me the id now what i need to do is i need to get that id to my work page so that i will show on the section right now here if you see user uh, defined and this section this collect info basically i have used this employee id to show on the section whatever employee id we are going to create now if you if you see what is the response structure i have got the response structure which I have got is, uh, okay, better I would show from here. So the response structure which I have got, you see there is a data. Underneath data, you got this ID. I need to map from response post dot data dot ID to my employee ID, right? Now that's where I'm going to do. So here, you, it's up to you. First do a property set. Again, uh, property set. It's up to you whether you want to pass this step page or not. I, I will show you why because I wanted to show you two flavors of it. What you can do is I'll just do an employee ID here because because I don't I didn't pass any step page means my um, uh, step page is work. That's why you could able to find employee ID. Now use this step page directly here dot uh, response post dot uh, data and dot ID. Okay. So now here mapping the response back to work page so that you understand okay now uh, i hope this is clear and once that is done now my id has been set and i could able to see uh, you know uh, um, the id in my section so let's quickly uh, go ahead and uh, test it before test let's quickly um, verify if everything is done so here i'll click and on click of the button i'll on the action i have got and i'm gonna call this create employee and this create employee will go and get me the detail and in the section, what I did is I told that if employee ID is not equal to blank, then uh, uh, visibility is like you hide it. If not, you don't hide it. Okay, all good. I think we are all set. Now we're going to test. So uh, uh, let me go to the case type. Let me uh, create a dummy case. Okay, I'll save it here. Save and run and I'll turn on the tracer just to make sure that I've got the uh, response. So name is like say, uh, again, Pega Hut and salary is something, I don't care. Age is like 27, uh, okay, uh, 27. Now, uh, now if I click on create employee, so let's see if I've got the ID and if I've got the uh, uh, detail here. Now, can you guys see that please find your employee ID 618, 628. Now let's see, so where did it come and whether it executed properly or not. So I'm gonna walk you through each and every step. Don't worry about it. Now, if I just search for create employee, okay. First let's search for create employee and try to understand. So in create employee, so first step here, we, I have created a page, new page. I've set the property. If I click on at this point in temp, uh, create employee at this point, you will see my properties have been set from my work page, which is Pegahart, whatever I passed, this one 27. 
Now, can you see the um, object class? It is belongs to the int layer. Okay. Now here the uh, next step where I have called the connectors, right? Now what I'll do, I'll do all the way. I'll go uh, to the up because as you already guys have known, people who again do not know. Please make sure you visit my uh, uh, get video so you can get all the details. I'm not going to explain the same thing here. So that's why I'm uh, speeding up a bit. Now here. If I click on the connect rest uh, temp create case, so if you see, I've got the response post where my uh, uh, data and ID is 628. Okay, this is what successfully the record has been created uh, 628. One uh, thing which I haven't uh, told or I missed it uh, on my last uh, uh, session is uh, whatever the HTTP response code, right? Whether it's success, uh, uh, failure, and all this thing will be part of your uh, one property called py HTTP response code. So this is where my uh, response code will get stored, and this is where I'm, I can see uh, uh, an error or something if it is, if it is a backend error 500. So I can use this property and uh, parse this response code, and based on that, I can uh, do error handling. So I think uh, 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 one of you has asked, uh, uh, you know, to do error handling, which I missed it, which I'm going to show in this uh, session. So this is how I'm going to do error handling. Okay. So now if you see, because it's success, I've got 200 here. Now this is done. Now, once that is done. So next step is uh, where I am setting back uh, that uh, property back to my uh, PY workplace. So that's the reason when you see employee ID. So you see this uh, ID has been mapped to 628. Okay. So yeah, that's how the employee gets created. Now, uh, if you realize here, you actually haven't used anywhere the, the data layer. That's the reason why we didn't have to create a data layer because it's a post one. And in post one, we generally, uh, uh, it's very easy to use the uh, activity than the data transform. Uh, can you do via data transform? Yes, you can do via data transform. Uh, uh, there, there is a way, but it's again tricky and so that's why people don't uh, want to spend that time over there because there is a way where you can pass this uh, 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 entire object, right? You create a temporary object, you pass this entire object to a uh, database as a string and then from database uh, you can pass that as a uh, page and then you can pass that. So it's, it's quite tricky. So that's the reason the easiest way and the time saving way is to uh, use the, uh, by using an activity. Now because we had this data uh, uh, B page in the get call and we have to store that value to use it uh, in the process. Uh, that's the reason why we have uh, 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 created a data layer. But here in the create generally the response will have only an additional parameter like okay uh, it is success if success then what is uh, the ID or something like that create response will not be heavy like get get response means you are actually getting the detail from the server right that's the reason your response will be heavy but create means you are just creating it you either you'll get one uh, id or something like that right you are not gonna get uh, more response uh, uh, filled that's the reason you don't need to use a b base okay now that's the reason we don't even need to create a uh, uh, data layer so don't be uh, surprised if you if somebody would tell you don't need to create a data layer it's actually a good practice so that you don't want to unnecessarily create and make your uh, code unnecessary heavy uh, because you don't need to use that. Now coming back to uh, another thing uh, uh, with respect to error handling, what we're going to do is uh, I'll, I'll show you. So uh, let's say if at all while creating an employee, um, uh, uh, it, it failed to create an employee ID, then how are you going to uh, do the error handling? All right. So you will do the error handling over here in the activity. So before that, I'll just quickly uh, show you guys. Uh, there is a uh, warning which is valid for our uh, uh, case, right? Our activity. So they said temp create pages were created in this activity, but were not removed. So guys, uh, uh, this is not at all the best practice where you are creating a temp object and you are leaving that as is and not removing it. So make sure, uh, you know, uh, if this temp created object has, are created, it obviously created for a temporary purpose, right? You need to make sure that you are going to remove the temp object after you finish the work. If you don't remove, what will happen? If you don't remove, it will sit in the, uh, you know, um, uh, pay, uh, clipboard and it's gonna make your uh, process heavier and heavier. And then it will impact a lot in the performance. So here, what I need to do is the last step should be removing that temp page. 
for sure without fail you need to do that okay now that will reduce my warning another one is about the activity where uh, you can justify okay or you can change this uh, activity to utility that's a different story altogether now focus on the uh, error handling now here if everything goes success it will create it will set the property it will cause a connect rest it will uh, set the response it will remove the pin piece okay all good very good now uh, if at all any error come then what are you going to do it so the first uh, best practice that you need to do is you need to always have a jump condition in the connect rest okay that's the first uh, best practice now if i click on this jump condition now on what kind of jump condition and what you're going to do so it depends on your requirement on um, what you wanted to do so some people uh, uh, do pay set message some people uh, uh, you know uh, kind of so a banner message so there are multiple way you can do literally so here i'm going to go with a simple approach where and if there is an error i'm going to do a pay set message and i'm going to show uh, the user on the screen now let's say for example uh, first thing is you see here in the connect rest here on exception jump to a letter step right so this is something you need to make sure you are putting a jump condition if at all you are unable to uh, pass the response or something you need to make sure you uh, put this jmp condition here and also here what you can do is i'll just quickly do submit as i told you you can use the um, uh, connect uh, sorry py http response code right this this is the property which you can use also right so what you can do is you can use this property and see whether it's 200 or not so here what i'm uh, going to do is i'll uh, put this property and so this property will be part of my uh, if you see this property is part of my temp page so i'll use this temp page here temp page dot py http response code if true continue when uh, okay is not equal to 200 let's say means it's not success right most likely uh, as i told you http 200 is only success now here i know that is coming as 200 because you uh, by the time you read api you know what are the http response code uh, from the swagger file so you don't need to worry about it so you can put if is not equal to 200 then what i want to do is i need to jump to a later step where i'll put jmp if false then continue with well. So now I have I have taken care over here. Now if uh, where I need to create a jump condition is right after uh, the step four, which is you put a jump condition, and here you do a prop, uh, pay set message. Okay, I'm going to do a pay set message in the work page. Now here in the pay set message again I need to put this condition. Uh, uh, this one if is not equal to 200, continue when else skip step. Why? Because during the success scenario, when it is actually 200, it will try to paste, uh, do a property set. If I don't put a condition, it will do a pay set message also during success scenario. I don't want that to happen. I want it to uh, set only during the exception scenario. If at all the, there is an exception in connect rest, it can come here and directly do a pay set message. And success scenario, it will do a property set and it will remove the page and it will go away. Now here in page set message, so the category is py message level. So it's up to you what kind of category uh, you want to create. But again, for for in, with the interest of time, I'm just quickly going to uh, 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 create a. Um, uh, it's kind of a py uh, field values. So, uh, so error message. It's not kind of a py. It's actually a py field uh, value. So uh, um, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a field value here. Now here in the field name, what I'm going to do is I'll copy the PY message level only as it is there. You can choose your own uh, type uh, to show your error message here. Um, uh, cannot uh, or couldn't create an employee or something. Could not create an employee. Okay, so I'll do a save here. Now that, that's pretty much it. So what I did is I have uh, put a jump condition if the HTTP response code is not 200 and because of the jump condition it will come here and paste that message now i know for a fact that about this api that if i uh, hit multiple times then i'm gonna get uh, uh, 429 or something let me oh yeah 429 right let's uh, let's see that uh, okay so I'll, I'll try to hit multiple times so there are a couple of things i haven't uh, obviously done because i'm gonna create uh, multiple as in i'm not hiding uh, uh, or clearing this employee ID, just I'll leave as is. Let's say I'm trying for the first time, it created. Now I'll turn on the tracer. Okay, oh, sorry. I'll turn on the tracer. Let, let, let's hit it until we get a error response. Okay, I'll create an employee. It's okay. Clear, pause, play. Let me try to do it. It cleared, pause, play. Let me try another time. 
all right finally i got an error okay so this time see uh, because i got an error that's why it say couldn't create an employee so this is how i'm going to show uh, uh, the error message let's quickly uh, uh, read also as you could see there are a couple of error over here so here see in the create employee after connect rest so uh, it it failed so if i click on this temp uh, create employee so you see the pyhttp response code became 429 and it also has its own uh, 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 message py status message uh, generally we don't uh, show this kind of status message on the screen that's why we always customize it but if, given an option if you wanted to show what kind of error message you are getting from the backend then you can feel free to use the status message but it's up to your uh, requirement okay and you also get the exact error message uh, in the py error page so whatever you wanted to do you can pass and do the same now here what i'm going to do is so i'll just show you because it failed now what happened is uh, see here uh, temp is py is still not equal to 200 it said true yes not equal to 200 that's the reason what it does it it has directly jumped to uh, the uh, uh, sorry uh, my bad so after three step three what happened is because of the jump condition it directly jumped to five uh, step five and step five the uh, uh, message has been true uh, the the condition which we have written has been true here create employee uh, no here uh, the condition has been true and because of that page set message has happened that's why you see this page set message here that's the reason why it turned to uh, uh, orange so here we have set this message and the same message we are showing on the uh, screen when there is like uh, employee id could not be created now yeah i mean uh, this is how you should do error handling okay so that's pretty much uh, the end of uh, my post where I have shown you guys, you know, how to uh, consume a post API uh, because of the nature, uh, because of the different in nature on how you are calling a get API versus post API. That's the reason why I divided this post into uh, two separate posts so that you will get all the knowledge that I have got at the moment. That's it for today. I hope you understood clearly. Please hit the like button if you learn something or you like the way I have explained. And leave me a comment if you have any queries or feedback for me. It will help me to improve and also motivate me to post more concepts and videos. As I always tell, sharing is caring. So do share with others so people who do not know about my channel will be benefited. Stay tuned for my next video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do subscribe and click on the bell notification for my new video updates. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.